Hey, Shoki here. Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft World Building, where we're building a world with lore. In the last episode, we built this library, a berry library, if you will, to get ourselves an enchantment setup. Well, in between episodes, I got the Holy Grail. Feast your eyes on the not you. That's fortune. Feast your eyes on the best enchantment in the game. Yeah, that's right. That right here is a builder's wet dream. Silk touch. Because now we can go do this. Hi, Rob. Bye, Rob. Look at this. Look at it. We can finally do this. Wait. Silk touch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes such a nice sound, too. I thought... Oh. oh, no. I just... I think I just broke a cluster. Ah, uh, Wow. It is very sensitive, I must say. But oh, how soft and smooth it caresses these fragile little blocks. We, I really do love the sound that these shiny boys make. Now, they're all in the large stage, so I'm going to have to collect some of the smaller stage ones, but we got lots of them. Wow, look how menacing that is. I just kind of came out of my amethyst mine, and that that's, that's creepy, dude. It's creepy. I really should light that up, because I've seen creepers <laughs> fall down here, and, uh, you know, I'm very prone to dying. Luckily, it's not a hardcore world, though. Silk Touch just opens up so many more decorative blocks. One thing is that I can finally mine stone. Excuse me, Rob. One thing is I can finally mine stone without having to smelt cobblestone. So, you know, Silk Touch is very fuel efficient. I have a, like a perpetual build inventory. I am horrible with inventory management. Which reminds me, I should probably do some storage stuff. And look at me, I, I look tattered. I have like no no iron, so I'm just sporting a, a gold chest plate and a broken iron helmet, basically. Got no pants, I'm a hobo. No shoes. I'm, I'm literally bumming it out, but we got silk touch though. Wow, I look absolutely ridiculous, but... Uh, one thing I've realized as I've been playing is that I need farms. Now, I'm a toddler when it comes to redstone. I cannot comprehend redstone for the life of me. That being said, we'll be using designs found online for our farms. Given that this is a building focus series, we need a ton of blocks and farm simply gives me those beautiful building blocks much, much faster. I've still got plenty of ideas for this area, so building these farms is like passive income and who doesn't like passive income? Also, I think it's fun to just build farms in different areas instead of having one big industrial area. That way, uh, you have a reason to come back and visit other cities. Kind of like cities specializing in different trades for exports and importing goods that they don't produce. So for example, with the fairies, uh, I might do some organic type of items where I can come back here later on and collect those from these farms. And then I might go to a uh, Dwarven district and get iron. Oops, spoilers. So I've been watching some YouTube and I watch my own videos sometimes to make sure there's no issues. No, no, I know what you're thinking. I am not a narcissist. It's just for quality control. So since I've been watching my own videos, I've been getting recommended some cottage core and cozy Minecraft videos. And I stumbled upon this build from Gabby Violets, a honeybee hobbit hole. And I think it's perfect for this area. I don't think it'd be a hobbit hole per se, because I don't think I'll have hobbits in this world building project, but maybe it's like a rabbit burrow or a small animal burrow that's repurposed by a bee into a bee's nest. So thank you, Gabby Violet, for this idea. We're gonna make our own version of it and turn it into our own bee farm. I know I look fabulous either way, but I think it's time to kind of get rid of what I'm wearing. 
So let's get ourselves some diamond gear. I did collect some diamonds as earlier. They were diamonds that I found previously that I left there until I got this Fortune 2 pickaxe. And I mined out some of it, not all of it, hoping I can get Fortune 3 later on before I waste all that. But we got 12 diamonds to work with and I think we'll get ourselves a chest plate. Ooh. Got a chest plate and I guess some diamond feet. Is that the best way to use my diamonds? I really don't know. Uh, I guess there's feather falling, so maybe. Why not? A chest plate probably wasn't the best idea, but that's fine. I think I still have like four or five more diamond blocks. Or not diamond blocks, diamond ore down in the mine, so I might just get that so I can get fully set up. And there's our torch indicating we got diamonds. Aha, diamonds. Fortune, fortune. Let's see what we get. Six diamonds, let's see. Head is what two, four, five. Ugh, I guess I'll just mine them all. Twelve diamonds, not too shabby. From rags to riches, we went from a golden chest plate and a iron helmet unmatching, I must say, to this spiffy diamond gear. We're gonna eventually get all enchanted up, but for now, I think I kind of want to build. Ah, uh, but before we forget, the whole purpose of this library, library here, was to house our lore book. So it's time for some lore. The wood vitalized called Arbor Mancers possess a peculiar defensive ability. Embarkment allows a wood vitalizer to encase themselves in a protective exterior layer of petrified bark. While not as protective as metal armor, the bark armor is still durable and exceptionally lightweight. So I think in the last episode, I called it uh, barkification or something, and I kind of didn't like it. So we used embarkments, which, you know, it's a, it's a real word, but hey, who cares? So I haven't shown too much of the magic of this world, but in case you're new, we've got five elements that can be controlled in this world, each given to a specific race. The fairies are vitalized with wood, and we haven't talked about the other elements yet. Collectively, you can call the magic wielders vitalizers, I suppose. Yeah, it's kind of basically like bending from Avatar. But, uh, hey, this world and its locations have some inspirations from the show, so stay tuned. So, as we were saying, we need a ton of farms. And for this one, we'll be doing a bee hobbit hole. For this hobbit hole, I suppose we can either do honey blocks or we can do honeycomb. Um, I will need both. Maybe I'll have separate builds for them, or this might be a starter one, so there's a possibility that I'll just uh, use it for both. Currently, we have a very, very shady one right here. That's a hobbit hole if I've seen one. They, uh, they really want out, but, you know, I can't let them. But yeah, very tiny one. Been collecting some honeycomb here for some candles, but I think we're gonna expand our operation. Sorry, bud. So I think we're gonna have the build somewhere along this area since it's pretty uninhabited at the moment. I'll need to find a good hill for the spot. So let's just kind of take a peek and figure out where we wanna set our little build. I think we found our spot right about here. It's like a little hill, and then there's already a little piece carved out. I'll probably still have to push this uh, little cliffside inwards. So it'll be kind of hollow right around here. And then the exterior will be right here. So let's just clear some of these trees so we can get a better visualization. Alright, so we cleared up a little space here to kind of give ourselves a little canvas, but... We've got a little hobbit hole area right here, so I think we'll have to raise it up a tiny bit for the hill. 
I think we'll push this layer back a little bit and then the actual hobbit hole will start somewhere around here here and then we'll have to kind of hollow this part out so that we can build the farm I think I'll try to uh, build the farm first that way as I'm building I can get more honeycomb so let's start uh, kind of making some space here Alright, so we gutted out this little hill here, and we put a little bee farm in here. Uh, don't mind this, it's I just ran out of glass, or rather I broke a glass and had to replace it with one I had laying around. I actually very stupidly went in there and uh, tried to grab some honey before putting the shears in there and got attacked, almost lost a ton of bees that way because they kind of sting you and die, it looks like. But this design is by Triloms on YouTube. I will leave a link in the description. Very simple design, but it can be extendable if I want to make it larger. I can also, you can also swap it so that you either get honey or the honeycomb. At the moment, I'm just putting honeycomb. Hopefully it'll get the job done. I still need to breed up a ton of bees in here since half of them died by stinging me. So we'll do that as we kind of build this hobbit hole. So with the farm out of the way, I think it's time to start building. Let's get to it, shall we? And here we have it, our honey bee hobbit hole or bee burrow. So like I said, I don't think we'll have hobbits in our world, but I am open to possibly having a halfling style race, but that's all subject to change. So this will be our honey farm for the foreseeable future. If we ever need a ton of honey, we can go for an industrial level farm. But uh, if I do do that, I think it'll be in a different part of this world where heavy industry would kind of make sense. There we've got our little bees part at work right there. Uh, but for the meantime, though, I think this is a good starter farm that'll kind of give us our, you know, honey blocks that we need and fulfill our little needs at the moment. But this is our hobbit hole. It's a pretty humble little place. We use spruce for the trim and we use birch blocks for the base. And then we've got this honeycomb and uh, yellow wool here to kind of add splashes of color and add the honey bee part to the hobbit hole. I know a lot of people like symmetrical builds, but I went for somewhat of an asymmetrical build or rather I went for an asymmetrical build to kind of break up the build and bring it different levels of interest. You know, in real life, uh, well, technically, actually, bees are pretty symmetrical when they've got their honeycombs, but, you know, I think kind of building in an asymmetrical style kind of is kind of fun and kind of adds a little more character to the build. So let's just take a peek inside. It's very barren because I really just did the exterior, but we're using a spruce flooring with some strip, sp strip spruce logs and spruce planks and then we'll probably be using this birch uh just for the walls here i would use sandstone but i kind of don't have sandstone at the moment it's just not something that we are you know in abundant supply of we kind of need a desert for that but for this we've got uh our little honey farm here which will probably be extending further this direction just to make it more efficient I, you know, hopefully I don't have to build an industrial level farm later on. And then we've got a two story high hobbit hole. So we'll put this flooring around this level right here. I think I kind of laid it out a little bit, but this area, it'll, second floor would probably only go up to there uh, and probably down there. 
This side, it has no second floor. This will probably be a dining area. And then we'll have like a chimney coming up this way. So as we kind of talk about lore, I'm just going to come around here and decorate a little bit, like filling up these random patches. But so the Entios or fairies are tiny little things around two to six inches, maybe. And they have some insectile like qualities and features to them. If you know what One Piece is, uh, they're kind of like the Tontata tribe, which in One Piece are actually dwarves, but they're super tiny. Uh, some of them have insect devil fruits, which gives them insect like appearances and abilities. And I imagine that's how the Entios are kind of like. They've kind of got this bug like appearance and all that. I think we'll put some spruce here. Yeah, right about there. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, I imagine that's how the Entios are like. They're kind of insectile. They specifically uh, winged insects. The name Entios is actually me combining the Greek word entomo, which means insect and slapping on the suffix iOS or eos at the end, just because I kind of like the sound of it. With fairies being as tiny as they are, they probably keep small animals or insects as pets. So for this honey farm, for example, maybe we have a bee shepherd living in this area who cares for all the bees and kind of like a crazy cat lady in real life, but maybe a crazy bee fairy instead. Um, and all the other you know fairies are like, wow, look at that crazy, crazy bee lady. And so like real insects, uh, maybe the fairies on top of their magical abilities have some, uh, you know, insect like appearances and qualities. So, you know, like ants, for example, can lift crazy amounts more than their body size, like a hundred times their body weight. Um, and then, you know, maybe they've got mad hops. They can jump really high like ticks or something like that. Uh... I don't I really don't know how people kind of build and talk. It's I'm, I'm so focused on building. It's kind of like hard to do that. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I think I'm just going to build honestly. I'll kind of talk it's much easier for me to talk about what I'm building, I guess. Uh, I'm using this as a cur I'm currently using that as like a little storage space at the moment oh uh, that's fine i kind of like adding like stripped spruce every once in a while just to kind of break up the texture uh but here we're gonna probably let's see we're gonna come through here have a little dining area Maybe I'll have the or, hmm, fireplace I said was going to be here, but now I, I moved this here. So maybe the fireplace will be kind of a diagonal fireplace right here. I think that might be pretty cool, actually, now that I say it. So we're just going to knock out this wall here for the fireplace. Well, let's see. So we'll do something like this no. uh, maybe something like this and where's my slabs let's see slabs like that slabs like that no something like that and then you throw in a fireplace there you go and then let's see if you would knock out this part put some stone bricks there and bam you got a fireplace uh i gotta fiddle with it a little bit gotta mess around with it a little bit to try to see the best style for it Maybe something like that. It's a little, uh, kind of a little blocky, but 
I think we'll kind of mess around with it and I'm sure I can kind of figure something out to make it look a little nicer. But I think for the meantime, that'll suffice. So we're just gonna knock out this wall here, start adding in a birch, birch wall. And yes, I am using a stone pickaxe because I am broke. That's not a good sight to see. Someone just loitering outside your house. He's literally waiting for me to pop out there and just explode. It's like he's trying to preach to me. All right, so we put in some walls and some ceilings and we did a little bit of decoration. I'm missing, I'm still like, uh, I kind of ran out of items to decorate on the top of stuff. So, you know, things like leather to get item frames and paintings I haven't really done yet. But this is a little dining area. You can stare out into the outside, a little bit of lighting. This would be like kind of a little bit of kitchen. Uh, I should probably put a tripwire hook right here to mimic a sink. And then we've got the living room little circular doorway right there that you see in the Hobbit style. Got a little bit of storage, the little fireplace with a couch, a wooden couch, unfortunately for them, but you know, you gotta deal with what you got. Then I try to put up a little wall to separate the farm area, uh, put a painting there to kind of break it up a little bit. But for this farm, I left some area here where I didn't put things just because I might be extending it further out if I need to. Hello B. Then we got a little doorway going upwards. So upstairs we got a little decoration here. Upstairs more decoration and the upstairs is very barren. Uh, another circular doorway. Circular doorway there. The flooring <laughs> unfortunately had to be kind of weird here just because I had to uh, leave room for the farm underneath. But uh, yeah, so because the redstone's like right underneath here, so I have to unfortunately put the slabs up here like that. But the, like I said, the upstairs is a little barren. I left a little couch up here to look out the window. And up here, it's, you know, I think I would put like a bedroom here, but I might also just put another a honey farm up here, but this one only do honey blocks. So downstairs, I'm getting honeycomb and for... To get honey blocks, you just put bottles in, in instead of shears. So that might be an option. Otherwise, I'll probably just decorate it here. The only thing is, I don't see any reason for me to actually come up here if there's no farm. So that's why I'm kind of thinking about putting the actual farm in there. And then the exterior is still kind of a little bland. So we're just going to kind of spruce it up with some bone meal. And probably got to... Unfortunately, leave a little entry walkway here. So we'll probably... Oh, not what I meant to do. So we'll kind of just like... Uh, got a very janky pathway there. And spruce it up more over here. I think I'll go up here as well. And I added a chimney as well. Um, just for the smoke to actually come out, you know, kind of makes sense for that to, to work like that. Having that skeleton farm is really, really useful, honestly. This way I can kind of beautify this whole place up. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching.
If you have any lore suggestions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below and leave a like and subscribe. Bye bye now.